In this video, we're going to introduce a few concepts related to forces, inertia, the laws of motion, and we're also going to talk about force diagrams or free body diagrams, um, the basics of how they work. So let's start with the concept of inertia. Uh, so if we want to understand how objects behave, we want to think of how objects behave when there are no forces acting. So if we think about a bowling ball thrown in deep space away from any planets or stars, somebody throws it, it's just, just going to keep going and going and going and going on a straight line at a constant velocity. Uh, we can also imagine a hockey puck or a person on a slippery ice rink. If they slide on it, they're going to keep going, 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 going until they hit something. Uh, so the key here is that if there's no net force on an object, it'll travel at a constant velocity. So no forces means things keep moving at a constant rate. And this tendency of an object to keep going uh, is called inertia. So, uh, so that's inertia. And we measure inertia with mass. Uh, so yeah, mass measures inertia. So mass has units of kilograms. The more massive it, an object is, the more it resists change in motion. So it has more tendency to keep going. It's a lot harder to get a car moving, even if it's in neutral, than it is to get a bike moving. You can get a car moving if you push on it in neutral, but a bike's going to be a lot easier to push because it has a lot less mass. Keep in mind that mass is not the same as weight. Mass is your inertia, how much you resist changes in motion, and weight is the gravitational pull on you. And that gravitational pull will change even if you, uh, if you go to different, if you go to space or something, or if you go to the moon, uh, your weight will change, but you still have the same inertia and you still have the same resistance to changes in motion. Uh, so inertia tells us about what happens when there are no forces and how much we resist forces. Uh, but let's define what a force is. Our variable for force is F, and a force is simply just a push or a pull. And since objects go at constant velocities uh, when there are no forces, no force is required to get things for things to be moving. Forces only cause changes in motion, which means they cause accelerations, changes in velocity. Forces are vectors, which means they point in a particular direction. The units for force are newtons, named after Isaac Newton. Uh, capital N is the abbreviation. And newton is actually a derived unit. It's e one newton is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. A unit of mass times a unit of acceleration gives a unit of force. Um, so when there is no net force acting on an object, we say it is in equilibrium. All the forces are balanced, they cancel out, which means we have constant velocity motion. Equilibrium is an important term. Uh, that means there's no acceleration. An object can be moving and be in equilibrium if it's going at a constant velocity, or it can be stationary and in equilibrium if it's not moving. When there is a net force on an object, the object accelerates. Um, in the direction of that net force. Uh, so these are kind of two different states of an object's motion. Equilibrium, no net force. Acceleration, there is a net force. Uh, now let's introduce free body diagrams. So forces are what cause all of the changes in motion of an object. So if we want to understand how things are going to move in our particular situation or how things are going to change their motion, we need to figure out what forces are acting. And our main tool for doing this is free body diagrams. They're also called force diagrams, but usually free body diagrams, or FBD. Here's an example of a free body diagram right here for a, uh, an object sliding down an inclined plane. So uh, free body diagrams are very simple diagrams. We usually draw the object as a box and draw the forces coming from the center as vector arrows. So what we want to do is identify all the forces acting, then we want to draw and label the force arrows with lengths proportional to the magnitude of force, just like any vector, longer is greater magnitude. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we can fill in other stuff later and figure out how to analyze their motion later, in a later lecture. Um, but let's take a look at the forces acting on this sliding block. Mg is pulling down, that actually stands for the force of gravity, and it pulls straight down. 
This Fk stands for the force of friction that's slowing down the motion. And this Fn is the push from the surface of the incline that basically prevents the object from going into the, the incline plane itself. And that's it. Acceleration and velocity vectors may be useful, but since they're not forces, we don't put them on the free body diagram. If we want to put them in the diagram, we can put them off to the side. Since it's sliding down the plane, I might label that the velocity is down this way. It might make it easier to find some forces later. So let's now introduce some common forces that we'll see. Uh, these show up all the time on the left. Gravity, the normal force, friction, applied forces, tension, a spring force or elastic force, and drag or air resistance. A couple of other less common forces that you might see are lift, thrust, and the buoyant force or buoyancy. Let's, in, let's actually talk more in depth about the common forces. Gravity is an attractive force between all massive objects. The variable for the force of gravity is F sub G, and the equation is mass times acceleration due to gravity. So sometimes you'll just see mg instead of f sub g for gravity. So what that means for objects on Earth is that they're pulled towards the center of mass of a planet or star, which on Earth just means the force on them pulls straight down. Um, so here is a projectile going through the air, and these are snapshots of the projectile at different uh, times in its flight. And I've also drawn free body diagrams for the projectile. There's only one force acting, it's gravity, and it pulls straight down. So I've drawn my downward arrow and I've labeled it mg. And it's the same everywhere because the force of gravity stays the same everywhere. Uh, the force of gravity is also called the weight of an object. The normal force is a hugely important force. Uh, so basically, anytime you're sitting or standing on something, you're feeling the normal force. It's a contact force, unlike gravity, which means two objects have to be touching for there to be a force between them. And it's really just the push between solid objects that are touching each other. Um, so if you're leaning against the wall, that wall is pushing on you out of the wall. If something's sitting on a table, the table is pushing up on that object to hold it up. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, and the word perpendicular, a mathematical word for perpendicular, is normal. And that's actually why it's called the normal force. It's not natural, it's normal. Um, here are free body diagrams for an object at rest on a table. Gravity pulls the object down, but the table pushes up with an equal force, and that's why the object doesn't move. We already talked about the object sliding down the ramp. Gravity pulls down. Friction tries to slow down the object. The normal force pushes up perpendicular to the surface. Notice it's always perpendicular. It's not straight up. It's at an angle perpendicular to, well, this surface right here. Friction. Uh, friction tries to slow objects down. It tries to re resist motion. Uh, the variable for friction is FF, or at least that's what we'll use for now. It's also a contact force between solid surfaces, but it acts parallel to the surface, not perpendicular. And it always tries to resist sliding motion. It tries to resist sliding motion. So here's a free body diagram for a car going up a hill and slowing down. The velocity is up the hill. Gravity pulls straight down. The normal force pushes perpendicular to the surface. And friction push, pushes back against the car pushes back against the motion of the car to try and slow the car down. For an object at rest on an incline, we have a downward force of gravity, I should label that mg. We have an upward normal force, and friction is actually pushing along the slope, up along the slope, to hold the object up. A base, uh, baseball player is sliding into third, the baseball player is moving to the left. Gravity pulls down on the baseball player, but the ground pushes up on the baseball player, and friction pushes to the right, which means it's trying to slow the baseball player down as it slides into third. An applied force is kind of a generic name for just any push or pull from people or machines. Just kind of forces that don't really fit anything else. Applied force. Here's some examples.
tension, called Ft, is a pull from a string, rope, or cable. And it's a taut string, rope, rope, or cable because if the string's not pulled tight, it's not going to actually apply any force. And the force is always parallel to the length of the string. So here's a free body diagram for a chandelier hung from two vertical ropes. Notice gravity pulls straight down, and each rope pulls up with a tension force. And that tension force is uh, in the direction of the strings, which are straight up. If I had a chandelier hanging from two angled strings, then my free body diagram would look like this. Gravity pulling down, two tensions pulling at angles. The spring force, or the elastic force, um, called the spring force, is just the push from a compressed spring or the pull from an elongated spring. So um, this shows us the spring force for an object attached to a spring that's at rest here. Since it's at its rest length, there's no force. It's not pushing or pulling. When we compress it, that spring wants to go back to its normal position, so it pushes outward. When we stretch our spring past the rest length, this is our rest length. It wants to pull back to its original length, so it's, uh, there's an inward pointing force. Air resistance, or drag, uh, F sub D or F sub air, is the force from air molecules or fluid, mole fluid molecules on an object that's moving through the fluid. Basically, you're bumping into a bunch of molecules, they're going to slow you down. So drag always resists motion, kind of like friction but it's not, it doesn't have to be between solids. It's a solid flowing through a liquid. So here's two free body, or sets of free body diagrams for objects uh, that are moving where drag is not negligible. Here we have an object dropped off a cliff. Initially it's not moving, so there's no drag, and as it speeds up and accelerates down that cliff, the drag force increases, and it pushes opposite the direction of motion gets bigger as the speed gets faster, too. Uh, here's the forces on a baseball that's thrown. Gravity pulls down. Uh, the lift force pushes up, and that's due to the spin of the ball. And drag tries to slow the object down. It pushes against the direction of motion of the baseball. Baseball's moving to the left. Uh, that's it for the main forces. Hope that was helpful. Bye.